some space, please. Ah, Miss Clorand. My door. Fremenet. T. Fremenet. What's going on? What is Clorand doing here? Work. I'm sorry about shooting you, Mr. Linny. The tranquilizing effect will begin to wear off soon. Please take it easy in the meantime, though. What happened to Fremenet? Wasn't he diving just outside of the fortress? Why is he looking like... like this? A flushed face, an accelerated pulse. He must have consumed primordial seawater. <laughs> What did you say? Uh, please, make some space. I'll need to give Mr. Fremenet a more thorough checkup. Your Grace, I'll leave the rest to you. I'll talk to Clorand while you get Fremenet to where he needs to be. Everything else can wait. How is he? These symptoms are probably caused by an acute ingestion of a large amount of primordial seawater. Still, his condition is not critical. Of course, it would be best if he stayed for further observation. Let's leave him here for now, and move him to the infirmary once he's recovered a bit more. Uh, sorry. I am aware that the infirmary may not be your favorite place in the world at the moment. We do only have a single clinic in the fortress, however. Why would he ingest a large amount of primordial seawater after leaving the fortress? How could that possibly happen? Please, look after Mr. Fremenet for the moment. I'll go fetch some medicine and a respirator. Oh, I'll bring Miss Lynette back with me. Where is she? How is she right now? nap in an empty room after I tranquilized her. If my calculations are correct, she should also be waking up right around now. You might not believe me, but His Grace and I actually made some snacks and tea for her. What's that look on your face? I thought I made good time on the way back. Oh, I'm just admiring your punctuality. Had you arrived just a few minutes later, Sijuin may have been forced to shoot Mr. Linny again. How's the situation out there? The water has changed. It's pretty much as expected. The concentration of primordial seawater has increased significantly. I was only out there a short time, so it wasn't too bad. But if one were to stay for any significant amount of time... Well... You can see how that boy is doing. Where was he when you found him? The abandoned zone at the end of the pipes. A good distance into the water. Closer than I thought. He must have recognized it early on and tried desperately to swim back. Locking the door was necessary. I don't think we could have saved two. Well, I did try to convince him that I had my reasons. Never seems to work, though. It would probably work on Nouvellet. He has a knack for picking out who had good intentions, even when the outcomes were all terrible. Uh, it's a bad sign if you're having to plead your case to Nouvellet. Want some tea? Mm, not particularly. If you want to drink some that badly, just say so. Fine, I'd like to get some tea. Want me to get you a cup too, since I've already made it? Uh, might as well then, I suppose. Actually, do you have a towel? I would like to dry my hair. Linny, are you okay? <sighs> I'll be fine. They're all here now. Don't worry about me. Are you sure? 
you don't look all right. My hands and feet are still a bit weak, but that's probably just the residual effects of the tranquilizer shot. I'm back, everyone. Lenny! Oh, Traveler, Paimon, you're here too. Remine? Is he... He'll be fine. But for now, please help me lift him up. His breathing's beginning to slow down. Give me a hand and help me get him to the infirmary. Yeah, I'll take him from this side. Lynette, together? On it. Traveler, you seem pretty worried about him. Want to come with us? The Duke and Clarinda are gone. They probably went to get some tea. Huh. The Duke will explain the truth in just a bit. Miss Cloran will need a break, since she only just returned from rescuing Fremine out of the sea. He's awake! Fremine, how do you feel? <sighs> Lenny... Lynette... We're all here. Uh, where... am I? The infirmary at the Fortress of Meripede, Mr. Fremine. And you are no longer in any danger. How do you feel? Don't push yourself if you're not feeling up to it. Uh, traveler, Paimon, it's been so long. Uh, the sea, there's something wrong with the seawater. Shh, it's okay. We can talk about it after you've recovered. No, listen to me. This is really serious. There's primordial seawater mixed into the regular seawater. I don't know why it's there, but no one should touch it. Pipes... Uh... Right, the pipes. It's all coming back to me now. I'm in. Hmm. 
Seems like this pipe hasn't been used in a long time. It looks abandoned. <sighs> Where could Master Child be? mechanism looks like it's been tampered with. Could he have done it? Seems like I'll have to avoid those obstacles while I turn it. where the water starts. Okay. <sighs> Master Child probably dived into the water. <sighs> I'll go take a look as well. Vegetation here is a bit more sparse. These traces aren't natural. A person must have left them, and recently. I should. Oh, there are traces here too. I need to keep going. Huh? The traces are gone. But I don't see where he could have gone from here. Ah! Uh, wait! What the? Ah! Uh, uh. My heart is racing, and it's getting harder and harder to breathe. What's going on? No good. I have to get back. They still don't know anything about what's going on. If I turn back right now, I should still be able to make it. I can't. 
again. Die here! This... This is bad. I'm feeling worse and worse. And I'm still underwater. I... have to push on. In other words, the trail you were following vanished, and you had no idea where Master Child could have gone, but there was also no obvious place for him to have disappeared to. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. I tried my best to swim back, but I had already put some distance between myself and the fortress, and I just couldn't find the strength to keep going. I probably passed out some time after that. And you know the rest. Miss Clarand brought you back, but we also don't know why she just suddenly appeared at the fortress, or why she went out to save you. Miss Clarand, you say? I must go thank her in person. You're still too weak, Fremenet. You can go after you've had some more rest. Miss Lynette is right. I believe Miss Clarand will stay here as a guest for another few days, so there's no need to hurry. Guest? Then I can assume Risley was the one who invited her to come down here? You should ask His Grace about that. He'll be able to explain better than me. Yeah, it's about time he actually told us what's going on. Wanna come with us, Libby? Uh... No, please go on without me. I don't want to leave just yet. Lenny. The logical part of my brain is aware that we're safe right now, but I still can't bring myself to leave. Both of you are just in danger. <sighs> Understood. Then let's just sit together for a while. In that case, I'll leave the infirmary to you. The Traveler and I are going to head out for now. As long as you stay in here, I don't think you'll be disturbed. Thank you. I take it Mr. Fremenet's condition has stabilized? Of course! I wouldn't have left the infirmary otherwise. I've been expecting those two, but might I inquire as to the purpose of your visit, Miss Sejuin? I wanted to check up on Miss Cloran. How are you feeling? 
mostly fine, I think. If you don't mind, I'd like to perform another quick physical exam. It'll just take a few minutes. All right. Thank you for looking out for me. I'll take my leave for now, then. Well, want to explain yourself, Risley? <laughs> of course. But I'm not partial to the word choice of explain. How about enlighten? Mm, where should I begin? How about you start by asking me any questions you have? You can start with whichever one you'd like to get answered the most. Hmm. Then Paimon will begin. Did you know about Lenny's goals from the very beginning? Hmm, no. I just knew they were Fatui operatives sent to the fortress by the Knave. As for their specific goals, I only figured those out as you made progress on your investigation. You managed to monitor and stay ahead of them even though you didn't know what they were trying to do? They came here with ulterior motives. I'm quite adept at discerning what that kind of behavior signals. Initially, I thought their goal was just to investigate Child's disappearance. Linny suggested that I had deliberately let him escape, but in truth, I didn't really do anything special to help or hinder him while he was here. Everything he did, from finding helpers to leaving this place, he did on his own. Of course, it's inevitable that the Knave would make a big deal out of her fellow Harbinger's unexplained disappearance. I'm also quite curious about where that Harbinger went. So I figured I might as well let the Fatui do their own investigative work. All I care about is the answer. So you were hoping Lenny's group would just do your work for you! You make it sound like that's a bad thing. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned. I assume that Fremenet has told you already, the ratio of primordial seawater around the fortress of Meripede is on the rise. The Forbidden Zone has always been Linny's target, and you got roped into that investigation after running into him. I began to intervene out of concern for your safety, and also to prevent the fortress from becoming entangled in more irksome matters. Are the rumors true that you're also a former criminal? Why would you put it like that? Isn't staying here all day and serving as the manager of the fortress a kind of sentence unto itself? Another form of prison? I just happen to have some support from the rest of the inmates. That's all. Oh, right! Paima wanted to ask, who invited Clarant down here? Me, of course. I paid her good Mora to come down to the fortress for some field work. As a champion duelist, Miss Clarant could be considered to be an independent party. I needed to find an exceptionally capable person to help me get through the appending crisis. And saving Fremenet was part of that crisis? You can think of it like that, yes. Credit where credit is due, that boy is quite adept at diving. Had conditions not been as hostile as they were, he probably would have found the missing Harbinger already. That's not something you should be asking after. Nervalette only asked you to investigate Child's whereabouts. All I need to prove to you is that the Forbidden Zone had nothing to do with the Harbinger's disappearance. That should be clear now that you've spoken to Fremenet. But we've already uncovered that there's something wrong with the infirmary, and we've answered a bunch of questions that you threw at us. Isn't it about time that you answer our last question in return? You make a compelling case. Do you really want to know the answer that badly? Even if the truth may not be pleasant? Follow me. Seems you've forgotten just what kind of place the Fortress of Meripede is. Stand on the central plate. Wait, is there a secret message? 
mechanism or... Whoa! So, this is the Forbidden Zone? Honestly, for a place so well hidden, Paimon sure doesn't see anything special. What a huge door! There are three such isolation gates in total. Generally speaking, I'm the only one who's allowed to go inside. Hence the name, Forbidden Zone. Am I correct to assume you're going to run on back and tell your little Fatui friends everything? Well, I... My mom wasn't thinking of keeping anything from them. <laughs> well, I'd advise you wait until you've seen the whole truth of this place for yourself before deciding whether or not to tell them. Stand back. Whoa! They all just went up one by one! Go on, have a look. I've been interested in what lies beyond that gate ever since I assumed leadership of the Fortress of Meripede. Of course, it would be unwise to recklessly open it, but it'd also be risky and negligent to simply ignore any potential danger that could be behind it. The readings on that dashboard have not budged since the day when I first laid eyes on this place. But over the past year, the needle has crept upwards from its original position, likely because some parameter it's been tracking has changed, if only infinitesimally. Normally, I would have ignored it, but I happen to have some free time when I noticed it, so I investigated. Any guesses what the reading could be tracking? Very reasonable guesses. I've considered both of those as well. Unfortunately, our dashboard is tracking something less ordinary. The temperature should vary with weather and climate changes, so for something that rarely shifts, the water pressure is more likely. We ran a few tests to increase the pressure from the outside, but the readings didn't change at all. Later on, a few more possibilities occurred to me, such as a potential connection with the Primordial Sea. I began to make a few preparations based on that hypothesis. Over the past few days, the needle has moved again. With that, and the symptoms that Fremenet displayed after leaving the fortress, I can now confidently conclude that the readings represent the concentration of Primordial Seawater in the seawater nearby. The concentration of... Primordial seawater? But we're already under the sea! And that is precisely the problem. We're at the bottom of the sea, and now we're surrounded by toxic seawater. Somehow, primordial seawater got mixed in, and the concentration is steadily rising. Yes, that's very likely. But forget about the two of us! Not even Novelette knows where the primordial sea could be, much less where we could find a plug of leak. Oh! Oh! Seems like you've figured it out. I believe the Primordial Sea lies directly beneath this sluice gate. For some reason, the Primordial Sea water levels have risen significantly, and it's now very close to us. The indicators are now red. Although the gate still stands, some Primordial Sea water has already leaked out and mixed into the sea around us. If this continues... <sighs> Soon, it will no longer be able to hold back the Primordial Sea at all. Yeah, you know what the legends say. If this place falls, then everyone in Fontaine will be turned into puddles in the span of a night. But that's just... too weird! Why would the Fortress of Meripede be built right above a sluice gate for the Primordial Sea? Your expression tells me you think this might be part of a vast, complicated conspiracy. To be honest, you might find the actual answer may be exceedingly boring. 
It's just that the secret of the Forbidden Zone had been long forgotten by the nation before I rediscovered it with my research. There's no single founder of the Fortress of Meripede in any traditional sense. What we know about its history has been left to us by the people who used to live here. When the previous Hydro Archon, Egeria, ruled the land, all convicted criminals from Fontaine were exiled. The people drove the criminals away like a wolf pack chasing away the banished. The criminals received no sympathy of any kind from the people. They were exiled to the desolate seaside, where they experienced only pain, struggle, and the bone-chilling cold. Some of them began to repent and prayed to the Hydro Archon, asking if there was still anything they could do. The Hydro Archon took pity on them and said, You may go guard my secret, deep underneath the waves. And so, leaning on the power of the Hydro Archon, they gathered underneath the sea and began to build a fortress. They became a community down there in the deeps, and over the years helped it to grow. As the number of exiles increased, more and more people joined the community. When the first group of exiles died, they left the yet unfinished fortress to their successors. The Hydro Archon continued to lend her support, allowing the fortress and what it stood for to continue growing ever larger. Before long, this dark underwater fortress became the sinner's only home. And with that, the people here stopped referring to the fortress as a prison. They saw themselves as repenting sinners, who would regain their freedom once they had sufficiently redeemed themselves. But as time went on, people also realized that the fortress was a lonely place. Once they had gotten used to life here, they could no longer feel comfortable living in the overworld. Once they had finished serving their sentences, some people left and some others chose to stay. They'd find some idle position and let their withered souls fade away with the ancient secrets of the past. After many, many centuries, few people still remember the reason for the fortress's founding. Now they just see it as an integral pillar of Fontanian society, as the place where criminals deserve to be sent. Now and again, researchers manage to break one law or another and live out their days in the fortress. I learned all this from an elderly historian. Everyone else just thought he'd made it all up. But now you know every part of that history is true. Indeed. That's just as the prophecy says. If this gate fails, then everyone will be dissolved into the sea. To be frank, not really. But sadly, that hasn't stopped this prophecy from proving all too accurate. Prophecies are troublesome things. Just hearing one will create the first wave of panic. Seeing signs of it will bring about the second, and actually witnessing it in real time, the third. Let's go somewhere else. I want to show you something. This is it. Your Grace, perfect timing. The results from our last round of experiments have... Wait, Jurier, he's not alone! Huh? Luravine and Jurier? No need to panic, you two. I've already told them about our plan. What? After you warned us not to tell a single soul about any of this? I'm skeptical as well. Are you sure they are trustworthy? The results speak for themselves, don't they? These two may already know more than you could ever imagine. All right then, if your grace insists. They seem harmless enough, so I'll trust them for now. Well, how about some reintroductions? This is Jurier, one of the highest ranked researchers from the Fontaine Research Institute. He used to work under Edwin. I trust that you've heard of Edwin? Well, good. Saves me a bit of time explaining. Edwin's main areas of research were archaeum and gravimeters. As his assistant, Jurier is quite familiar with them as well. I hired him to be my technical consultant. You... you want to blow up the Fortress of Meripede? Ah, what a lovely idea. I'm already imagining it in my head. Gotta admit, I'm tempted as well. Guys, focus! Focus! <laughs> That taskmaster over there is Miss Lorvine, and is also one of my technical consultants. While Jurier used to be Edwin's assistant, she used to be Jurier's assistant. Ooh, are they together? 
See, everyone keeps asking this question. Are you too sure you're not a couple and just using your work as a convenient cover? I... Your Grace, I am not in a relationship with this man. If I dated her, I'd officially be madder than Edwin. Jeez, I forget I said anything then. Follow me. Whoa, there's another door that goes right up. Your constant amazement makes it seem like the fortress can do anything. But, Paimon really thinks everything's super cool! Well, let's spice it up a bit. And here you go. production zone that Paimon's never seen before. What's going on? How much do you know about Fontanian history? I... Uh, not much at all. Well, then maybe you haven't heard the story of ancient Lemuria. To give you a quick rundown, Fontaine used to be ruled by the Lemurian dynasty. According to legend, the Lemurian king Remus came to this land after being inspired by divine revelation and found the seer Sibylla, who had taken on the form of a golden bee. Taking the golden bee with him and riding on a huge ship, the Fortuna, he created his nation above the surging waves. He called his nation Lemuria, and used the Fortuna to incessantly search for new tribes and islands, calling on them to join his empire. There's a ship in this story too? Where there's water, there'll be ships. People believe that hope can always be found at the end of a voyage. Do you believe that too? To a point, I think. As you've already seen, I have a whole factory's worth of labor materials and technology at my disposal. Certainly can't hurt to give it a try. So the moment I began to speculate that the primordial sea might lie underneath the gate, I also began this project. Were you inspired by the legendary Fortuna? Hmm, maybe. Fontanians need something to hold on to, to cope with the impending disaster. Were the workers to find out the truth behind this ship, riots would destroy the fortress faster than any catastrophe. As the fortress's administrator, I'd never make such a reckless call. Alright, that's enough talking for now. I'll need another three cups of tea to soothe my throat. Do you have any other questions? Seems like you're good. Come on, I'll take you back. I'll leave you here for now. Oh, uh, thank you so much. No worries, but don't forget, it's up to you whether or not you want to share what you just saw. What you do from here on out will likely affect those three as well. For sure. Great. I look forward to what happens next. Welcome back. Do you want a cup of tea? How can you be so much like Risley, always drinking tea? Huh. Actually, now that you mention it, I just remembered something now. While I was sedated, I could still barely hear two people talking next to me. They were discussing everything, from the leaves, to the water, and even the teacups themselves. It must have been Risley and Sishween. Yeah. I heard one male voice and one female, so it should have been the two of them. They really were just talking about brewing tea. 
I really can't make sense of this place. So, Traveler, Paimon, were you able to learn anything from Risley? Yeah, he explained everything! Very well. Then, would you mind checking your answers against my speculations? Yeah, I took the time to rest, so I'm feeling a lot more relaxed now. Nobody else is around, and Miss Sijuin is also busy with something or other. So, let's just talk here. Alright, then I'll posit my theories. I asked myself three questions. Firstly, why was Fremene affected by the primordial seawater? It was because he dove into the sea. My theory is, the long-lost primordial sea is probably very close to the fortress of Meripede. That's our Linny. Secondly, Risley's attitude changed dramatically during the course of our stay here. He ignored us completely at first, then suddenly roadblocked us. Why? I spent quite a long time thinking about this. If he has been monitoring the Fatui since the very beginning, he probably ignored us at first because he was hoping we could find Master Child for him. What's more, the Fortress of Meripede is not part of Fontaine's court system, nor does it report to Udex Nervilet. Risley is basically the king of a no-man's land. As long as the Fortress doesn't do anything about Master Child's disappearance, Father can use it to pressure the Fontaine authorities. And while the two factions are pitted against each other, Risley will be free to move between the parties of interest. If I had to guess, he probably has something that he's working on himself. It's likely related to the secret of the infirmary, but I just can't think of what it could be. You're super smart! <laughs> Thanks so much. Then finally, there's the last question. If Risley does have a plan, what could it be? All I know for now is that his plan probably has something to do with the changing nature of the seawater. He's even gotten Cloran to help him out. Ah. Uh, that can't be the full extent of what he's doing. There's probably a secret passageway behind the block in the infirmary, and there's something big in the fortress that most people here never get to see. He has a bargaining chip, and it could be important enough for Father to deal with him directly. I don't have enough information, so I have no idea what his chip might be. But let me guess. You have the last piece of the puzzle. 